do thing. Um, how the hip hop? I want to know what was the true motivation behind just saying, I don't know, I'm going to write. Oh. Behind saying, you know, is it was it like their a therapeutic thing? Was it, you know, what was the true motives behind? I'm gonna go ahead and write this book. Well, in the book, I talk about one of my very good friends. I call him Alan in the book. He's an R&B and songwriter. He's going on tour this summer. Mm -hmm. So. He's my one of my very 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 best friends, and so we know a lot about each other, like. Little, like, you know, you have your best friend, the one you, the first person you call in the morning is your right. best friend. That's he and I, right? We call each other the first person. Oh. Talk about him for hours. Talk about the industry, talk about relationships, talk about everything. Yeah. So he knew a lot about my life, and I know a lot about his life. So he kept telling me, you should write a book, you should write a book, you know. And I was like, I don't know if I want to write a book. Because I had already been um, reclaiming your power, because, you know, I had did an inspirational mm -hmm. book, my first book. So I was in a relationship, actually, with a rapper, and he was bipolar. Crazy. <laughs> 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 so I didn't know what bipolar was. Right, right. And he was, you know, in the beginning, he, he was very honest up front. He said, I think you should know that I'm bipolar, but you should also read about it to know what it is. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, because I was just like, well, bipolar may be just schizophrenic crazy. I don't know. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> Stop taking your Well, after two years, you find out what both bipolar really is. Mm -hmm. You know, they have severe mood swings, and, you know, the attitude changes. You know, one moment they have suicidal tendencies, homicidal thoughts. Um, they, they should be on medication. He was not on medication. Right. And I figured, like, well, I figured he was just like most black men. Because, you know, who, because I always knew men who always, you know, from the time they woke up to the time they went to bed, all they did was smoke weed and drink. Mm -hmm. And that was him. Because that was his way of self-medicating. Because he mm -hmm. didn't want to take the medication because the medication, he said, provided side effects he didn't like. Mm -hmm. So, which I thought, okay. I, it didn't bother me. Yeah. But then the relationship became physical, abusive, you know, mm -hmm. verbal, emotional, all that other stuff. So my best friend, who's the army singer, knew about this relationship. He's like, get out that relationship because it's very detrimental to you. Like, he, he can kill you. Mm -hmm. And you know how when you're in a relationship with somebody, you choose, I'm in love. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> and you can't see nothing because, you know, like, oh, hey, you can never kill me, you know. Until he's dead. Until he's dead. Until he's dead. So it was that day that he really did try to kill me. And, um, Amen. <laughs> so I went to, I had, well, I went to another friend's house. We were living with us. So I went to another friend's house. And I called my best friend. He was like, go pack your stuff and come stay with me. And it was, it was so emotional, so hard. Because, like, you know, we've been with somebody for two years. You live with that person. You know everything. And it was like, how can I walk away? And I felt guilty because I know he was bipolar. You know how you want to be supportive. Mm -hmm. and, I know they're trying to get back their career, you know, like, I knew that all that stuff, I was just like, you know, because that, that was one thing he kept saying was, you'll be just like everybody else who walk out of me. And I, and I always, and I had flashbacks of teenagers. Right, that's that. <laughs> that's that kill. Right. <laughs> so I felt really, really guilty for a long time after that. And so my friend Alan, he really helped me to get back and to help me, you know, just emotionally, because I was just, Drain. Very drain. Mm -hmm. Cause I, you know, I, I said after the second year in the relationship, I totally just gave up. Mm -hmm. Like I just just went with the flow because I was like, this, this mood swing was so severe. Like one, five minutes from now, he's extremely happy. Ten minutes later, he's angry. And I'm like, and it was always my fault. Mm -hmm. You know, I did something, or I'm the emotional one. Or I'm the one that mood swing. It was just really crazy. It was really crazy. So. So Alan, so then I thought about it, so he's like, well, why don't you just write? It'll be therapy for you to write. So I, I originally started to write that book about that relationship, but then I had to go back and look at my whole life. And I said, well, why did I end up in this relationship? So once I started going back, and that's when I realized it was, it all cultivated to my relationship with my mother. 
you know, talk about in the book, which is because I was always looking for love from the one person that I wanted it the most, which is my mother, who never even displayed an emotionally or physical type of love. So that's what I think I was always looking for. And so it was very, so that's why I, I wrote the book, because I really, really wanted to heal mm -hmm. myself. Because I thought I was healed. Mm -hmm. And then you go into a, an abusive relationship, because you know, you think you are better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can help them, as I can say it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and then, um, because I come from the inner city, I come from Detroit, you know, I knew a lot of people who want to be a part of the hip hop industry. Uh, because it's so, you know, tantalizing. It's so, you know, the eye candy and everything is the glamorous life. And people look at it and they're like, wow, I want to be a part of that. And coming from the inner city, you know, you think once you become part of this culture and lifestyle, that somehow you think, you know, like everybody thinks I can, I can rule the world. And you don't realize this is a business. It's really entertainment. Everything you see is an illusion. So, that's what I really want to help people. And I, and I, you know, talking about my mother and my, my brother who died from the AIDS virus. And, you know, just what it was like growing up in that atmosphere and how it's so relevant to today because so many young people have parents or an aunt or cousin, somebody in their family. Now, it's, it's, you can't talk um, about the black family without talking about HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. So I want to really, really bring that to the light and just know, and let people know like no matter what your circumstances are, no matter where you come from, like you can overcome, you can be anything you want. And I think that was one of the things, because I always had a dream. Like I remember 13 years old, and I talk about this in the book, and that's my aunt's um, house in the living room, and that's when I discovered Rappers that like Sugar Hill Gang. Mm -hmm. That's when I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Like, <laughs> hearing that song, because yeah. you know, I grew up on, you know, the Old Is Your A's, Lionel Richie, LTD, like all that. Right. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that's old people music. Like, and I never heard anything for young people at that time. And when I finally heard that song, I was like, oh my God. And I started reading Right On and Black Beat and all those other magazines. And, Start fantasizing about New York, how I can get there, how I can be a part of New York, part of hip hop. So that's why I wrote the book because it's, it's a love story that I have. That's why I thought it was a love story. We just want to love, like looking for love in all the wrong places. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> can I ask you a personal question? Uh -huh. Have you found love? Have you, have you gotten into a comfortable, fulfilling relationship? You know, I met this guy. He is so nice that it's so weird and scary. Cause I'm like, why are you so nice? Because <laughs> I've been through so, so much in those right, relationships. Right. So it's weird because I'm always I'm trying to find something wrong with him. Mm -hmm. That's me. Why are you calling the door open for the door? Right. 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 So it's like the nice guy, I see why they say the nice guy always finish last, because mm -hmm. like, you too nice, you know, you know I think I've, I've always been looking for the bad, mm -hmm. you know. So you can be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. I want to see the bad, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I met somebody, so it's, so it's, and I told him, I said, you have to be really, really patient, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really emotionally trying to heal myself, accepting what this is, but it's very difficult. Is he in the industry? No. Thank you. Right, right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so with that relationship, do you find yourself having to go with the cloak and bearers now that because you're now you're you're completely comfortable with yourself. You're out you're living, you're no longer DL is are you? No. Secret, you know. well, but you did not. He has no other secret. <laughs> but this is what they say, you know, like, I don't show up in the next book. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it reminds me of, Car you, did you already Carissa? Yeah. 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 In her second book, how she said every man she met afterwards was always saying, asking her, am I going to be in the next book? I'm going to be in a good problem. And it is, like, I think it's always like a badge of honor for them to want to show up or, you know, know that. Mm -hmm. That he's talking about me. You know? <laughs> 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 <laughs>